one team I think that will definitely be looking at next season in a more positive light is Ipswich Town, Dave. Let's have a talk about them before we wrap up the pod, who sealed their promotion back to the Premier League, first time in 22 years, 20, 22 years which is mad. Two promotions in a row. They've won, or rather they've lost 10 games over the course of two seasons and cumulatively got more points than Manchester City. Of course, the seasons <laughs> are longer in the, uh, the EFL. But Kieran McKenna has worked absolute wonders. If you look back at some of the comments when he was appointed, there were so many that were kind of mocking him, really, and his links with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and the tenure at Manchester United, how it didn't really prove to be that successful. But if you speak to anybody that's worked under him and with him on the training ground, they'll all say how much his focus is on coaching and making players better. And you look at the money that Ipswich have spent, you know, it's a few million pounds over the course of two, two seasons, isn't it? It's not a lot. So he's actually coached these players to get to levels that almost won the title. They're only a point behind behind Leicester City when it came to the end of the season. So what an achievement for Ipswich. Absolutely. It's ridiculous, isn't it, really, to be honest. You mentioned there just just 10 games uh, lost over the two the course of two seasons. And I watched them uh, in the game in midweek against uh, Coventry. And I thought that they played so well, considering the situation. Obviously, it was real high-pressure situation still. Yeah. And they played so well considering there was so much on the line. Um, and I've been so impressed just the way they played throughout the season. Like you mentioned, Kieran McKenna, the job that he's done, I think it's he's got to get so much credit. And let's go, let's be honest, this can look so good on his resume. Um, a, such a young coach still. Um, coming from obviously United. And he had a real... Obviously, a lot of promise back then, uh, a lot of praise, I think, behind the scenes saying that this is a coach who's got a lot, lot of ability. And he's shown it um, in his first real high-profile high job, you know, instantaneously, yeah. and then promoted last season, again this season. But he's shown that he's able to manage many different players, especially younger players, obviously, being under-18s coach at United. Um, he did really well with them. I think the players, especially the younger ones, Sarmiento, Hutchinson, um, yeah. Leif Davids, have all played absolute pivotal roles in this team. Um, and I think you've got to give a lot of credit to that to that recruitment team. If you look at the players yeah. they brought in, the likes of Kiefer Moore, Hutchinson yeah. and Sarmiento, they've scored really important goals. They've really... Yeah. Um, the competition for places in that in that team, and, and you look at the strength they've got in depth. Even the players on the bench that can come on and make a difference, have come on and and 100%. really scored some important goals. Um, they've scored a lot of late goals as well. So, you know, I'm over the moon for them. I, th- I think I think they've got a good. Um, they've they've really got a lot of promise. I think for next season, I think there's a lot of hope for them. And you look at the way they play. They're so. They're absolutely amazing to watch the, the, the way they play their football. Mm. Um, um, you know, I can't wait to see them next season. And to be honest, I'm just going to say, put it out there, and I hope that Ipswich fans aren't upset by this. But I kind of hope that Norwich go up as well because I'd love to see Ipswich versus Norwich in the Premier League <laughs> again. I think that would be absolutely superb. Yeah, just as a yeah, it would. But let's keep it back on Ipswich, really, because I think there's a lot of snobbery from Premier League fans when they see promoted teams come up and they always look at the squad and try and judge if there's any stars there and, you know, if there's anybody that's going to score loads of goals. But I feel like there's shades of Luton with Ipswich and that they've been promoted quite quickly <laughs> and not invested a huge amount. And a lot of that core squad from, from League One is still there, isn't it? And a few smart loans have been thrown in because the budget's been fairly tight. So it does beg the question, and this is me being a Premier League snob again, saying, are Ipswich strong enough and how much can they reinforce in the summer? Because there is only so much coaching you can do when the players aren't Premier League quality. So any of those players do you think that Ipswich are going to bring up with them that you think, yeah, they could really help them stay in the Premier League? I don't see why not. I think Leif Davis is a top player. I think he's so good. Um, going forward, he's you know really threatening on... On that wing, he offers so much in terms of the way that they play. It carries the ball up and down that wing, the endless energy. I, yeah. I really like him as a player, and I, I'll be. I think there's going to be a lot of clubs interested in him. I bet, I'm so glad that they're they're going up because I think Premier League clubs will be looking at him. Um, I think he's had that good of a season. I think Wes Burns has he's performed really well 
um, this season as well. Morsi's been superb. And I think there's a lot of unfounded talent down or up and down the football pyramid um, that potentially slips through the net and that sometimes they just need that opportunity. I mean, you look at Luton um, this season, some of the players that have actually you know, risen to the occasion and risen to that stage, there's no reason why these Ipswich Town players don't deserve an opportunity and yeah. they're more than capable. They've got a lot of potential. There's no reason why they shouldn't get that chance I think just to just to have this experience and um, go and enjoy it and I think there's going to be no better coach than to to show him the way obviously Kieran McKenna I think how calm he looks and the calmness that he instills in this team you look at him on the touchline mm. you know it, it's, it doesn't show any sort of uh, emotion in terms of like he's, he's under any pressure at all in the game does he he just looks like he's always no. under control, in, in control I think that's one of the things that they really need to learn from this season, from the, the teams that are coming back down again, is that there's a, a way of adapting to Premier League football and you can't really be too stubborn in the way you commit to a style. Burnley found that out. Although I think Burnley have improved and got better as the season's gone on, they should have adapted from day one. And I think Ipswich need to have that reality check and say, look, our quality is, is going to be below the teams even that are going to probably be 16th or 15th in the table and they need to bridge that gap by just being harder to beat and I think if there's any coach that's going to do that it's probably Kieran McKenna who you know he knows his players inside out he knows their strengths and he's going to have to find a tactical way of, of nullifying opponents but also putting the ball in the back of the net so maybe an extra goal scorer to try and clinically finish those chances that they do get <coughs> But just be very defensively organised, I think, and that's what McKenna will, will look to do. But yeah, Ipswich in the Premier League for the first time in a while is exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's it. probably the only thing you can question is whether the strikers can do it at Premier League level. You know, obviously, Keith yeah. Moore has done a great job at times, you know, for Wales on the international stage. And he's, he's not exactly been the most prolific at the Premier League level. Um, no. We don't know whether George Hurst can do that yet or not. I've always been... You know, touted as a big talent from very young down the age groups. So when he obviously started at Sheffield Wednesday, went to to Leicester, and obviously he's been given his opportunity in Ipswich. And this last couple of seasons, he's he's looks really looked the part. Um, Hutchinson's, you know, he's still very young. There's a lot of young players in here that haven't had that experience yet. But I think they should be looking to teams like Luton, like you mentioned. Um, I think they probably need to invest in probably a couple of defenders. I think. They could still improve there a little bit defensively. I think I think it would be absolutely brilliant if if Luton go down. Which I kind of hope they don't because I'd I'd love to see them stay up as well. Um, you said that about Forest. I know. <laughs> I can't I know. Have both. I, I can't have both, and I don't want either of them to go down. There's still the teams in there you can't prefer to go down. But <laughs> it's yeah, um, Tiedem Mengi at Luton. I think it'd be a great acquisition for for Ipswich. Um, yeah. I think he'd give them that sort of calmness at the back and he's great on the, on the ball as well. So it'd suit Ipswich down to a T. Um, well, I think learning from um, the positives of teams like Luton where they have signed players that look like their careers were kind of finished, like Ross Barkley. And wow, he's had a great season, hasn't he? Andros Townsend even, you know, these are journeyman Premier League players that could still do something. If Ipswich can find players with that kind of Premier League experience, they might have a good chance of, of fighting relegation. You never know. 